Welcome to Deep Dives with Divas, where we talk to entrepreneurs just like you about their challenges and the fortitude it takes to be successful right after these messages. We have Cynthia Phillips, owner of Absolute Body Symmetry Fitness Compound. So, Cynthia Phillips. Yes, Terry Holland. The owner of Absolute Body Symmetry. That would be me. Your fitness studio, personal training studio. Yes. You moved into a new place on Baltimore Place when? Approximately July 2014. So it's been a little over a year and a half. Yes, How's that been? Has. Challenging, <laughs> rewarding, maddening, uh -oh. aggravating, Oof. new experiences, overwhelming. Challenging again. <laughs> yes. So you said challenging a few times. Tell our entrepreneurs what was so challenging that you mentioned it twice. When you have to rely on other people to do their jobs the right way and to rely on them to do what they are supposed to be expert at and they don't do that, you will find that there will be all kinds of problems with city zoning and that in itself can create some issues with other areas of necessity in your business. Now, you had a location in East Atlanta. I did. Before you got more space on Baltimore Place. I did. Did you have to go through the same thing in East Atlanta? No. So this doesn't always happen? Yes. Oh, it does always happen? If you are opening your own space from the ground up, you will have to deal with the city oh, okay. because I purchased a space that was already up and running. The only piece of city work that I had to do in both instances was go before the board, the city's okay. board, okay. and ask permission to do what I was doing in the place that I wanted to do it. Okay. So that I had to do twice. For the, the old the space and the new space? Yes. Okay. But the actual planning of the build out, I I did not have to do the first time okay. because it was, it was already, already an existing structure okay. doing what I bought it for. It was already a functional gym. So you consider yourself lucky in that aspect, huh? Back to going through when you went through with the It was the space. best OJT I've ever had. OJT. On the job training. There we go. <laughs> okay. So the city was challenging, but it's really rewarding. Well, of course. Anytime that you set out to do a thing and it gets accomplished, once it gets accomplished, like working out, oh. it feels good <laughs> once it's done. Okay. The process may not be the most enjoyable piece. Okay. And you may find that there are tense moments, like working out with tense muscles. <laughs> so. Well, I know that from me being in your space consistently, I know that not all of that challenge came from the city. I know there was a pole competition <laughs> In Baltimore Place, right. that was very nice. It was very nice. I was there. Everyone enjoyed it. I did not imagine that it would cause any challenges, but it did. When you don't own your own. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. Other people's opinions and other people's perceptions can have a marked um, impact 
on the things that you're choosing to do. Okay. Pole fitness is something that I and my managing partner push for in a fitness standpoint. Right. Because so many women enjoy that form of fitness, the sensuality oh, of it, <laughs> the movement of it, yes. the woman's space of it all. Yes. When we decided to have a competition on site, we talked to management okay. about having this competition. And while they thought it would bring them money, they were fine. But as with all things, you can't really out see the outcome of something that is new, right. done for the first time anywhere so they did not make the money that they thought they would make oh. on parking um they do not did not like my managing partner because he's an outspoken man who doesn't soften things in conversation yeah and at a point that was unbeknownst to me the owner of the building was selling and they were his management team so prior to the sale they decided, since they disliked my manager, that they would have him removed from the premises and put me into a situation that became a small claims action. Tenant landlord law in Georgia will always lean towards one, the landlord. Yes. And even if it does not, there's not enough money in it for a lawyer to touch. Oh, is that what happened with the attorney situation? Right. So most attorneys want a $2,500 retainer fee. Right, in the, in the beginning. In the beginning. Okay. In a small claim situation, a $2,500 retainer for lawyers quickly will become $10,000. Small claims, the uh, highest you're going to go is fifteen. So if you can't do the thing yourself, you hear that audience? Some battles are not <laughs> worth fighting. Sometimes ah. you just have to swallow your pride and let things go. Um, but that was not a circumstance or a situation that you can write into a business plan. Right. That is something that can cost you money. <laughs> that is something that can almost put you out of business. And it did. You will have no recourse. It almost put me out of uh. business. It did not put me out of business. It simply set me back for a few months. So tell the audience how you recovered for some, from something that almost put you out of business. Because as an entrepreneur, I have been put out of business. So tell me how you recovered. You rob Peter to pay Paul. Oh, you use credit cards. Uh, you go get a job. If you have a true belief in your business, no matter what befalls you, you have to just move on. There will be fear. There will be uh, ramen noodle days. Uh, there will be many conversations with landlords about your desire to pay on time, but you need a few more days. You will not get out of that unless you are absolutely 100% blessed not to be affected by worldly matter. Okay, and right. if you have some deep credit cards and or family members that can help you or you are still working a full-time job making enough money that the banks will in fact support you.
So tell me, yes. after all the challenges that you've been through, how can you be motivated and how can you even imagine widening your scope, getting a bigger place, which brings you more challenges, in another location? I have outgrown my current location. For example, I cannot run classes concurrently. If I have class A in studio, group fitness room, and someone wants a class at the same time, I have to put them in the main room, which means I have to move the trainers out. Uh -oh. So I'm losing money because I cannot concurrently run all of these oh. things that people are desirous to have inside my space. Okay. Um, I have also outgrown the space from a day-to-day -day functional standpoint without the group training aspect. I have too many trainers on the floor. I have trainers that are successful running groups, which is good for their pocket, right? but it's also good for my pocket. Okay. But if I have three trainers running groups currently, Ooh. that means the other 10 trainers that might want to come in are also displaced, especially if I have a group fitness class going on in another room. So I have to increase the space to accomplish sort of more concurrent activity uh, with more people, but I have to do it in a manner that doesn't outgrow the amount of money that I will have to output in order for this to happen. I'm a little confused. Okay. You're a little confused, aren't you, audience? Yes, you are. Can you give me some details? Uh, okay, as a fitness studio, any gym, most people know this is not, this is a love thing. This is not a profit thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> discretionary income, unless you are a person who knows celebrity, celebrities, or lots and lots of people, you have so much ebb and flow that all you really do is sort of maintain. Okay. That's really all you do is maintain. Um, and you're not promised because you're dealing with people, right? This is there's no residual income for me yet. 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 Okay. Yet. <laughs> so. <laughs> so I have to create the opportunity to. I forgot. I'm sorry. You have to take me back now. I forgot what I was going to tell you. Okay. That was a little confusing. Can you give us some details when you say outgrow without Okay, so it's, it's, it's the money. money. It's the yes. money. Yes. It's the money. It's the money. Nineteen dollars a square foot is a lot of money. Okay. For a discretionary income business. Okay. Because nineteen dollars a square foot does not tell you what the net is. Or the interest, interest uh, right, taxes, right, 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 right. Uh, common area maintenance. Okay. So currently, if I am at nineteen dollars a square foot, and I'm trying to move from where I am into something with a larger footprint for the same amount of money, then I have to ensure that I don't outpace the payments that I make. Currently. Okay, okay, I get it. I can't outpace so, that. I don't have residual income coming from things that don't happen without me or another body. Okay. So you just try to make sure enough money comes in. We make sure you don't incur more expenses. Right. Then you have enough revenue to come in right. and take care of that. Yes. That sounds like what we have to deal with at home with the budget. So I oh, it's totally all a budget. get that. It's all a budget. But the other piece that is difficult when you're dealing with commercialism is finding a space to grow in that hasn't already taken you out of pocket. Okay. So in this instance, I am trying to take advantage of an opportunity as I did with the space I'm currently in. I took advantage of an opportunity. The opportunity is the people that are trying to rent for you have a need and you're able to lower your outflows by helping them gain their needs. Okay. 
So that was something that I have learned to look for opportunities that won't take me be too far beyond where I currently am okay. so that I can move forward. Not that there's not an element of risk. There will always <laughs> be an element oh, of yeah. risk. There is no guarantee that what I'm thinking will work. That doesn't matter. If you're going to do it, do it. Yes. So, um, Aren't you but you can't know go that they're too far better. out of your realm. Right. You still have to stay in your lane. You still have to eat. You have to. <laughs> and, and, and you have to feed other people so that you can get help. Right. Okay. Okay. What advice, like uh, just a couple of tips, would you give an entrepreneur who's thinking about having a brick and mortar? Mm -hmm. Understand that you're buying a job. That's the first thing. Explain. When you go to work for somebody else, you're generally in there from 7 a.m. to 4, from 9 to 5, whatever it is, it's a set amount of time over a set amount of days. Right. Generally. When you're making really, really big bucks, y'all don't really care this isn't aimed at you because you're probably not going to quit your jobs. Right. Right? So for those of us in those areas of I got to be here, um, understand this. You got to be there when it's yours. Yeah. Not 40 hours, not 50 hours, not 60 <laughs> hours. But day and night, you will be eating, breathing, sleeping, living, loving, hating this thing that you have gotten yourself into. <laughs> it is called owning your job. Okay. I get that. Right? Yes, because nobody right. does anything that somebody else does not want and become successful. Right. And as long as you are beholden to somebody else to help you pay the bills for that thing that you want to call your business, you have a job because you are answering to someone else somewhere, sometime, some way. Don't get it twisted. You own a job. You either love your job or you hate your job. If you're going to be an entrepreneur and have a business, love your job. But it's your job. <laughs> okay. It's your job. Thank you so much, Cynthia Phillips. You're welcome. Cynthia Phillips from Absolute Body Symmetry. Her job. Thank you. You're If you are an entrepreneur and would like to talk about your life challenges and the fortitude it takes for you to be successful, please contact us at deepdiveswithdivas at gmail.com. Like us on Facebook at Deep Dives with Divas.